Yo, what is really good, my dudes? Today is Monday, February 5th, 2018. We got another RuneScape update for y'all. So today we see the release of the Mimic Boss as permanent content in the game. So without any further ado, let's just jump right in the video. Let go! Alright guys, so yeah, like I said, the Mimic Boss is now permanent content, all thanks to Mod Shiny. So, if you want to get or partake in the content, all you gotta do is get your hands on a Mimic Boss token. These, which you can earn through various means throughout the game, either through combat or even skilling on occasion. However, until the 19th of February, you can grab yourself a free untradeable boss token from the Mimic Chest in Birthorpe located just outside the Warrior's Guild. So that token is going to teleport you to the Mimic Chamber, where you can take on either easy, medium, hard, or elite versions of the boss before the time runs out. If you're able to kill it within that time limit, you're going to be rewarded with a mystery box, which scales based on which difficulty you've taken on, and will reward you with things like Scrimshaws of Aggression, Corruption, VIP Slayer Tickets, Mimic Weapons, and the Mimic Tongue Cape, as well as the Helm, plushie and several other different things iron man will get their own specific drop table if they choose to fight this boss now i did make a video about a year or so ago maybe on how to kill the boss on the hardest difficulty so if you're interested in that i'll have a link down in the description below as well as at the end of this video basically it'll tell you exactly what the fight entails all the different special attacks how to avoid them how to look out for them and see what they do and even what's like when you get punished for not avoiding those special attacks now back then I did have some questionable range gear to be quite honest. I had a mixed match of both power and tank armor. It is what it is, but even with that subpar gear, I was still able to kill the hardest mode with at least like 30 seconds to spare. So it's still a relatively good guide to get you an idea of exactly how to get it within the time frame allotted for that difficulty level. Obviously nowadays you have all kinds of things like Fortic auto attacking with magic, which would be the most optimal choice. Or we got by criminal bolts recently, which made range dual wields a much more viable option. Either way, I was still able to kill it back then with a lot of time to spare with the subpar gear but if you just want to know about the mechanics the guide is still very useful so like i said description down below as well as at the end of the video if you want to know how to kill the boss that being said guys i just want to let you know about the upcoming live streams real quick we've got one tomorrow at 17 utc which will give you a month ahead regarding february and everything that entails and that's if there's new information revealed in that live stream i'll definitely be covering it on the channel like i do with the normal live streams so stay on the lookout for for that if it has anything juicy that I feel you guys should know about. Also on Sunday we have Mod Lee's PVMing live stream. Hop in there and go kill some bosses with Mod Lee. Reason why I even bring this up in the first place is because this week we have a guaranteed drop if you tune in for the loot scape crates. So those of you who do tune into these, you can get your hands on the deep sea fishing rod animation that you're seeing on screen right here. It's kind of a call forward to the new deep sea fishing update coming out later in the year. So if you want your hands on this animation for free, do watch those two live streams and you'll be the proud owner of it. And don't forget guys, if you're a member, hop onto the Solomon store this month and pick up your free item. That item this month is the Magician's Teleport. So head on over and quickly grab your Magician's Teleport for this month. That is free. Quick over, you know, obviously, if you remember, go ahead and grab it. And yeah. Anyways, guys, with that out of the way, we're going to jump right into the patch notes and see exactly what we've got going on over there. So let's go ahead and check it out. A cache issue causing crashes due to incorrectly saved data such as near Captain Laugoff's camp has been fixed. The client no longer freezes when players attempt to close it. Item lists such as search functionality in the Grand Exchange or item lists in the Quick Chat system now display the correct results. Players now have a chance to obtain a Soul Talisman from looting a sarcophagus in Shifting Tombs. On the rare occasion that the Fletching Skill Cape perk strings a bow for free when using a portable Fletcher, which also makes an additional bow, both items are now sent to the bank. The Slayer Co-op Potion ability now works inside the Sophonim Slayer Dungeon. The Quest Complete pop-up for Between a Rock now states that correct quest name. An issue preventing the achievement Unlocking Your Emotions from completing has now been fixed. The issue preventing the Gregory 5 achievement from showing up as completed has been fixed. 
The Taskmaster emotes now consistently unlocks by completing the Taskmaster achievements. Hovering over an NPC while in combat now correctly shows their overhead bar. Provoke can now be used during the global cooldown. Heal Other and Heal Group may no longer be used on targets in single way PvP zones. The Immortality effect now holds players in place for 1.2 seconds fewer once the ability activates upon death. Attacking a golem will now force it to appear over Telos when Telos is siphoning a font in Phase 4. This will only happen when the minions are your active target. Telos' anima bar will now reset correctly if a player uses Immortality and survives his insta-kill bomb in Phase 5. The required defense level to equip a piece of armor now displays on tooltips. Compacted Jewelry no longer has a percentage-based item charge tooltip. The number of charges remain still appears. The backpack interface is no longer hidden when logging in with fixed screen legacy interface modes. The Iron Man achievements board has been updated to contain the latest achievements attained by some legendary Iron Man, by the way. Lent Dragon Calls now execute their special attack to their full extent. A bug causing various Czar area soundtracks to automatically unlock has been fixed. The Poison Purge aura no longer depletes when the player dies outside of the wilderness. The Jack of Trades aura is no longer placed in the backpack when equipping the Hellion aura. Aura refreshers in Death Store no longer state that only one can be used per day. The insane final boss title now correctly checks for 100 hard mode boss kills. Various depositing actions have been added to the following. Players are now informed which items are allowed into Demonheim and given an option to put all forbidden items in their bank when attempting to enter. Players now given an option to deposit all forbidden items when a monk of Entrana searches a player without needing to make use of a deposit box. Players are now given the option to deposit forbidden items into their bank when traveling to Entrana using a hot air balloon or into a deposit box if traveling from Entrana so as to not create a shorter bank route to Taverly's Summoning Obelisk. Players are now given the option to put all items in deposit box when entering a Fremenic Saga. Players are now given the option to put all of their items in a deposit box when entering the portal to New Verrock. Feedback messages received when interacting with a Wicked Hood now appear as information boxes instead of chat window messages. Right click options for the Wicked Hood interface now give feedback for the make runes and teleport features when running out of either. The color of the Saradome and Godbook has changed to better distinguish it from Armadale Godbook. Elkoi now has a follow left click option if the player has started the Tree Gnome Village quest. It's now possible to teleport directly from the Araxite layer when Araxi has been defeated. Players no longer need to select the Needle option on the tool belt when attempting to craft Dragon Hides. Plant Pot Packs have had their price adjusted to closer match the price of unpacked versions. The minimum stack value of a Beast of Burden has been increased from 5 million GP to 15 million GP. The Crystallized spell can now be recast on the same target before it expires. Players can still have only one Crystallized target active at a time. Magister kills now count towards the Slay Bell's Ring achievement for Corrupted Creatures. Familiarization now resets on Wednesdays instead of every 7 days. Generic combat styles have been added to the action bar switching. Entering Demonheim now correctly changes the action bar to be bound weapon that is automatically equipped. Sunspear ranged is now correctly recognized as a ranged two-handed weapon when using automatic bar switching. And that is it for the patch notes. Links to the main game update and the patch notes will be down in the description below if you want to go check them out for yourself. You can choose to do so there. That is it for the video, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit that like button. If you're not subscribed and you want to stay up to date on things RuneScape related, then hit that subscribe button. Anyways, I appreciate you watching. I am out. Peace.